Well, it's uh, nice to be here. Uh, maybe some of you do not know my wife and I. We moved here uh, a few years ago. I can't remember now. 20 years, maybe. We go by decay now. We don't go by year, right? <laughs> and uh, and uh, I believe God called us to come here. We took a map and we, we closed our eyes and it ended up on Trenton. Oh, no, sorry, it ended up on Belleville. No, don't do that, okay? I'm just telling you what to, not to do. Anyway, so we came to Belleville, and then God directed us here, and from that point on, we began to minister. So I became, uh, we became a pastorizer of people. Now, if you're a farmer, you know what pastorize means. Get the bugs out of the milk. Homogenize, we all already have an homogenized church. We got people that are big, small, uh, old, young, so that's homogenized, right? And pastorize is we got to preach the word so your life can be changed. So, my question for you are you afraid of the word? Are you afraid of the word? Because the word can really mess you up. In a good way. In a good way. So, um, Pastor Travis asked me to speak on, uh, he's doing a series on guardrail. Guardrail. And um, he says, well, take this paper. And I, 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 I have a hard time with paper. I never used paper, you know, and uh, somebody else sermon and all. But I took the note, and uh, Sharon said, well, you can do that. So anyway, I, I put it together because my topic today is sex. Of all the topics he could have gave me, <laughs> he took off, and he knew, and he gave me that one. Yeah. Because Peter reminded me this week that... Uh, I found out what you, all you told uh, your, your Travis about the birds and the bee. You asked him, do you know anything about it? He said, yes. He said, all my friends told me about it. <laughs> right? So I didn't do too good there. But, and I don't know uh, how to start this. It's not a condemning message, okay? Uh, but, you can take it because the devil is on your case and he will condemn you. Right. Sexual immorality is not a good thing. The Bible talks about it in the Old Testament, talks about it in the New Testament. And now if you go on to do some survey on the Internet, you'll find out that uh, it can mess, mess up people. Yes. But you're here because God delivers. How many have made mistakes sexually? We don't have to raise your hand now. I know you're honest. Did you see all those hands goes up? And the rest of you, you didn't want to raise your hand. Because we all did. You know what I mean? I mean, we all did it. But we're going to stay there. No. We're going to read this. Uh, because we're going to put some guard rail around our life. And it's so important. Thank you, my friend. All right. Um, it's so important to, to put some guardrail because we live in an area, not an area, as an era, era, okay, a time, where everything is like just about permissible, okay? Now, some words I have a hard time to say, but I'll say them. And if I have too much of our time, somebody will tell me the word from their seat. I don't care. Okay? And guardrail is, is I remember one time uh, we were driving a teenager from New York to, from a convention. We got to Toronto, and my friend Nuff had about three teenagers. I said, are you sure you can make it? Oh, yeah, I can make it. Well, on the 401, right in Scarborough, there was a, you know, the middle piece is cement. And I, I'm behind him, and I'm seeing he's getting close, and I, there's nothing I could do until he hit that 
thing, and uh, you know, you're responsible for the kid. You're supposed to be, anyway. And I saw the car front go up and down, and then his tire was all busted. Well, without the guardrail, he would have went on to the other lane, on the other side, face to face with maybe a truck or, you know what I mean? So it did save his life. So what I'm saying to you today, if you don't put guardrail in your life about sexuality, it mess up your life. It will. It will. So my wife and I, uh, I've learned that at a young age. I mean, since we got saved, that's what I mean. Okay. Um, and it's there for safety. So Pastor Travis talked a little bit about guardrail. So because we got saved and our, our kids were four, two, you know, we began to do what the Bible says. Okay, and we begin to live a holy life. Now by a holy life, trying to be holy, trying to follow God. And you know what? That's all God is asking you. Try to follow him. Amen. Set some area. So we set some area. And at that time, uh, as Travis grew up, he, he left the faith. You know that. And he had some girlfriend and he lived a life. I mean, he was all over. So sometime he came to sleep at our house, and he'd bring his girlfriend. I said, Travis, it's fine if you come, but uh, this is your room, and this is our room. In the basement and upstairs. So that's how far we can keep them, right? <clears throat> and, and, and he understood that. He understood that that was our, that was our, what's the word? Rule, boundary, and uh, you know, so that nothing, that we're not guilty of whatever, right? So, and, and it was hard because, you know, the, everybody's doing it. Well, hey, this is not everybody. This is my wife, your mother, and I's decision. And maybe someday you'll thank me for it. So now when we go visit them, if we sleep at his place... I sleep in the basement and she sleep up there. <laughs> yeah. You haven't forgot, right? <laughs> but that's because I snore really bad. So the furthest away I am from anybody is a blessing. Okay? So anyway, that's that's how we grew up in the faith. Uh, um but see, we set rails or guardrail for our kids. We did. Up to they left the house. Now, once they leave the house, they have to set their own guardrail. I'm going there. I'm not going there. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Because, and this is very important, Beck, because we're going to be talking about sexual sin. That's the greatest sin. Do you think that maybe slapping somebody or shooting somebody is a bad sin? But it says the greatest one is, is a bad one. is sexual sin because it will take you from bad to worse. And you think that something that you, God has made... Sex, a beautiful thing, and, but it's not to be messed around in a way that we're not supposed to, okay? And I'm not going to talk about ways you're not supposed to. You can figure them out, all right? Because I don't want to tell you what to do. I'm just here to bring the word, right? Amen. I didn't choose that topic, right? I told you. Okay. So sex is a good thing. It's created for God by God and it's created for people. And you know what? You set your boundary around it. And it's gonna be awesome. You remove boundary and you know what? You it's like you remove all the guardrail and you, you can't see, you know. 
Some, because we can't see. I remember one time, my, my wife and I, I was drunk on the wheel. I was drinking a lot before I got saved. Not a lot, but too much at the time. <laughs> and she was camping and driving, you know, I had this black car. You didn't see it in that night. It was black. And I'm, I'm driving, and there was somebody on the road. You know, when you go into camp, campsite, there's a guard there. I didn't see the campsite. I see. I could only see blur. She said, hey, there's a guy over there. Stop. I didn't stop. The guy just ran across in the ditch. I didn't go in the ditch. He did. <laughs> so somebody will go in the ditch, but chances are it's going to be you. So, um, so maybe you had a bad fall before in this area. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about the past. I'm talking also about the decision that you're going to make today. And you know, if you had a bad fall, a bad fall could be how many had ever a uh, financial bad fall? I uh, don't like, yeah. <laughs> she prayed for multiplication of the bread. Remember, you told me that. You okay now? God restored you. How many had your health was really bad? Maybe you didn't take care of yourself. Maybe you did something, and you know, the doctor, maybe God got prayer. God restore. See, God is in the restoring business. So the past and, and what happened, it affects you now because we deal with it with caring for the heart. We're dealing with people damaged by lifestyle, abortion, things that happen, you name it. Life sexually messed up and they become a Christian. And sometimes there's still a remnant that comes up, right? And sometimes my wife and I, we got to deal with it. And you know what? Never thought of that. Since we do that since a couple of years ago, the most common thing is sexual problem. That is number one marriage destruction because what happened in the past and it's not dealt with it and what happened now because the devil he will come and condemn you ha see what you did see what you did Linda. see what you did and you know he'll do that to all of us he'll tell us but you gotta be a a believer which is a follower of Christ Leave the old thing behind. And today is a new day. God restore. God's rebuilt. And then you can begin to walk as a believer. So you can be a, a Christian or you can be a wannabe Christian. Do you want to be a Christian? No. You want to be a Christian. Got you on that one, right? All right. So God restore. I like that. I mean, I saw God restoring people in this place above all things. They used to think we were in hospital for people. They would bring people here, emotionally disturbed, emotionally sexually, you name it, drugs, alcohol, you name it, they brought them here. We saw them restore. Some of them left, some whatever. So... Guardrail is kind of like, I'll put it, it's like a, you know Jesus said, build your house on a firm foundation. Well, sexual immorality it says to flee, so that's not a firm foundation. In Kohlberg, he's going to put that uh, clip for me. I got a picture of a house here uh, that we took, uh, I believe, last week, right? And uh, so what they do uh, last week, they, there was about uh, 25 of those. I took just one on, on this one. Uh, this other one all over the place. 
And, and you know, that was last week. Nathan come and he said, I want to go to the beach. So we went back and it was all gone. See, sand, yes. sand is just kind of the water and uh, everything, it just kind of melt away. And Jesus says, and I'm not, you, you don't build a house like that, but it's just to show you that it can go from, it looks nice, your life can look nice. But if it's not built on God's word, it can fall apart one piece at a time. And you know, sexual sin is a, if you don't have guardrail around your life, if you don't build your life on God's word, somewhere it's going to crumble because there's a foundation that is sin. We were going to buy a house a while back on uh, near Wooler. So nice looking house. So I look in the basement and I said, my golly, the wall is crooked. And I said, uh, you know, one foot like this coming in the house. So I look at the house. The foundation is made out of plywood. Beautiful house, all painted up and everything. The ground was just pushing everything because the foundation was rotten. All right? So the house is 20 years old. It's supposed to last 100 years old, right? But it's not because the wood picks up the water. And first thing you know, it's right. No cement, just plywood. Beautiful house. Foundation is no good. So if Jesus says something about immorality and sexuality, and if God says something, it must be important. Because it's going to keep us on the right road. All right? So uh, let's see. Um, I got a note here, but sometimes I go ahead of myself, okay? So our culture is uh, nah, just do it, whatever, okay? Uh, you know, everything is okay. A little bit of porno, that's nah, okay, you know? Romance movie, that's okay. And you know, at the end, they get. They they get uh, kissing and then they first you know they're in bed and and then you know they, they don't have any commitment there so yeah it's so nice the movie was so good you know they 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 got together but you know it promotes everything promotes just do it right and if we have a guardrail Pastor Travis talked about having guardrail in his own life about as a minister here. You know, and, and you know you were here. You know you can't be with a woman alone and all that stuff. And I just found out yesterday, and I'm not saying that to spread the rumor, but uh, if you know uh, Bill uh, Hebel, Hebel, he, he's uh, uh, something has happened there because he has no guideline. You know, Pastor Travis talks about Billy Graham's guideline. You know, you, the doors always open. You never sit with a woman alone, and blah blah blah, whatever. You know. He's got guardrail in his life. And right now, this is one of the biggest ministry and thousands and thousands of people. And see, the higher you are up, the harder it falls. You know, if I say the name Jimmy Swagger, most people, first thing you know, you think of what he did. Though, even though he repented, even though he's still in ministry, and whatever, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm just saying to you, you know, if something, somebody in the faith falls, you know, if Paul or Peter would have fell in immorality, you know, and not repent or whatever, would have been a big thing. So we have to understand that. All right. So some people think that, well, we don't know too much about uh, immorality because, you know, we haven't been in the world that much. We haven't been in the world that much. Well, we had the well, world at our door so many times. People just come and say, our life is a mess. What can we do? 
And, you know, we handle this and handle that, and everything usually leads to sexual immorality in their life. Yeah. So, um, so you're going to build your house on this? Or are you going to build your house on what you think is right? You know, we have to make decision and put some guardrail and say, okay, I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to watch this thing. And you know, God has not put that there so that he can keep us from experiencing everything. You know, if you put your hand on the stove and if you're little kids and, you know, the thing is red hot, you know, it's not that you want to control your kid because if they touch it, you know, their life's going to be messed up, you know. It's going to be painful. And, you know, some people learn with pain and other people take the word of God and says, God says to do this, I'm going to do it. You know, there's a lot of stuff I could talk to you about what God told us to do. And it sounded silly at the beginning. Like, for example, uh, don't talk much about giving or tithing. You know, we had just got a new house built. We had no money, basically. Travis used to go and warm up his feet on the stove downstairs because there was no oil in the furnace. I found an old tree, cut it, and we burn wood. And uh, you used to, the, the two kids would go down there and put their feet and warm up before school. Because we said, okay, well, we're going to give to God what belongs to God. And basically, it was tight. It was hard. But now, you look at 40 years later, we're okay. We don't suffer. We don't suffer from any lack. So God's word is awesome. Amen. All right? Now, let's look at, we didn't look at that scripture. Matthew seven twenty four. Um, this clock never changed time, so I don't know how long I have. <laughs> there so, whosoever hears the saying of mine and does it, I will link him to a wise man or a wise woman who built his or her house on the rock. Amen. That's where you want to build your house. You want to build your house on something that is solid. Even though there's restriction to it, but it's solid. You know that because he said it, you're doing it, it's going to be okay for your life. And people are going to look at you and say, you are a fanatic. You know, it's not everything that's in the Bible that's true and whatever. But you just do what you hear God saying to who, to you, and you do it. So you got to build your house. you got to start uh, set some guardrail around yourself. Say, I'm not doing this. I'm going to do this. God says it. And that's it. Let's look at Matthew 5, 28. But I say to you, uh, whosoever look at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, that's Jesus uh, telling uh, his boys, boys, I'm going to teach you something here. I'm going to teach you about the birds and the bees, right? And he said, I'm going to teach you, you cannot look at a woman to lust after her in her heart. Now, yesterday we took the kids to the beach, right? And you know, the, the young lady, the, the, they don't have a bathing suit. I don't know if there's a shortage of linen or what. <laughs> and it's like, you turn your head here, okay, you turn your head there, and uh, it's a, you have to work at it. Otherwise, your look can get focused on something that you shouldn't be focused. And, you know, I mean, that's not just for guys. Now girls are just about as bad, you know. And you see a guy with a, some that. So, you know, and they look good. And, and you know, it's, it goes both ways. But, you know, if you have put some rail there and let's say you're not going to go look for 
you know, the first look is okay, but the second look, you're going to kill that one and say no. And, you know, and it's not easy, but after a while, it becomes natural and natural. So Satan cannot condemn you because you did your best. I mean, the bird can fly over your head, but they don't have to build a nest on your head. You can wave them off. And that's the way it is. So, uh, so this is a, a thing that Jesus says. In his heart, that's where it starts. In your heart. Sever, so look at the woman to lust after her. And basically, uh, there's a lot of scripture. We can't look at them all, but uh, we'll look at some. Um, I want to show you something. Acts 15, verse 19, 20. So Paul is giving instruction here because they went out of uh, um, Jerusalem and they went into other country and then there was Gentile. Gentile is not a Jew, okay? Like I'm not a Jew. I'm a Gentile. I am grafted to the tree. And I'm adopted Jew. All right? And, and you know what's, what's happening? He says, you know, they said to the Gentile, well, you got to do the, all, the, all the things that uh, the Jewish do, you know, all the laws and, uh, you know, this and that. And, and you know, you got to get circumcised and whatever. And, you know, I mean, just whole shabbing of thing. And then... All the forefathers, the disciples of Jesus, those who ran the church said, these are the three things I want you to do. Can you put the second one? Next verse. He uh, says, write to them to abstain from things polluted by idol, from sexual immorality. And the first thing is, uh, don't have nothing to do with idol, worshiping other stuff. This is a bad one. The second thing is from sexual immorality. It didn't say from sexual thing. Sexual immorality. And from things strangled and from blood. You know, like uh, somehow there's life in the blood. I, you know, I mean, my mother used to make us blood pudding. We had no choice. We had to eat the stuff. We didn't know. You know, you just put some spice in the blood and you cook it and whatever. You're the cook, right? Maybe you should do that one Sunday. No? Okay. Anyway, and those are the three things. But what I'm saying to you, there was sexual immorality. Stay away from that. That's dangerous. Amen. That is dangerous. So he's, he's teaching the people in the other part of the land that don't know the Jewish law, do those things. So today I'm saying to you, do the second one. Do the second one. First uh, Corinthians six verse eighteen. Pastor Travis might have touched that one. What did he preach on? I wasn't here last week. Who remember the message? Uh, one, two. Was that? Oh yeah. Wow. So he says. Paul says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who sins sexual immorality sins against his own body. And that's why I say it's a biggie. Because it affects your body. I know a man, you probably you don't know him, came to us one time. says, I got a devil. You got a devil? I want you to cast it out. And you know, guy is serious. You're a Christian? Yes, I know the word. You know, I don't, you know, he's not a wannabe Christian. He's a Christian, that's what he says. Okay, well, let me tell, uh, tell me about your life. You have many girlfriends? Oh, hundreds. You mean you slept with hundred women? More. And he's smiling. Ooh, like I'm a man. I slept with a hundred women. And he's saying that, and I, there's no repentance there. 
You can't cast the devil out if there's no repentance. You know, and if you look at the Bible, when Jesus cast out a spirit, it was an impure thing. Always there was an impure spirit. It messed up people's life even then, since the creation of the world. I mean, we don't want to go there. So, well, I said you can't do too much because you don't really want freedom. So he was upset with that. So when I'm saying that to you, listen. What happened to the man? He lost his wife. She didn't die. She found somebody else. He lost his kid. Lost his business. And finally, he got so sick, the guy, he looks maybe a, he looks like 25 years older, sick as a rat. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's a metaphor. It's, it's a new one. It takes you a while to get used to it. <laughs> anyway, and I'm not saying that to, I'm not condemning the man. I'm just saying there has to be repentance from the old stuff. And say, yes, I'm serious. I don't want to go there anymore. I'm going to live a new life. Lord, I need your help. Because now we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost talks about in 1 Corinthians there that we read just about before that. That he doesn't want a man to be tied up to a prostitute. Or meaning, uh, you know, just somebody else for the night. Or vice versa, a woman. So... Has we set some guardrail and say, I'm not going to do this, you know? Say, for example, if you want to lose weight, that's the easy one to understand, right? <laughs> and I say to you, let's go to a buffet, Chinese buffet, <laughs> and you can eat everything you want. And, you know, you set some guardrail in your life and say, ah, it's just not not going to do that. I can't. If I go there, I'll blow the thing up. I'll gain t- three pounds. Three pounds, maybe four. Because I'll just heat and heat. And it's hard to do, isn't it? Because everybody, you decide to go on a diet and your friend calls you over for supper and says, we got this big lunch ready for you guys. I mean, you can eat until tomorrow. You can eat like a rat. There you go. There's a better one. <laughs> So, um, sexual immorality is not good. It's, it's bad. And you know what? Uh, and you know, when I, I bring the word, I'm not looking at your life. I'm looking at the word. I do the word. I live the word. And I want you to be part of it. Because I know that if you live a godly life, and you put rail about sexuality uh, in your life, then things will go good for you. Amen. Amen. That clock hasn't moved. <laughs> I guess, okay. All right. Mm. Was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You get there late and you never leave. <laughs> uh, so uh, I could use many examples. I was uh, looking at how many, um, when we're talking about sex, now sex is, uh, is everywhere, uh, everywhere, with everybody, right? Uh, men together, uh, women together. I mean, it's in the scripture. You know, it's all over the place. So I, was, I said, if God says I should flee, what happens if I don't? Well, I looked at uh, homosexuality. You know, it's a big thing. You know, when people, oh, you said you, you talk about against us, we can go to court with you. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. And I look, I said, how long do homosexuals live? How long? How long do 
lesbian live, and they have a span of half, half, not heyday, 40, 41. Because you step into things that is sexual immorality. That's what God calls it. And, and, and if you go that avenue, it's even worse. If you go the other avenue, it's not that good. You may live a little longer. But God wants us to have a good and healthy life. You know, he gives us promise of 80 years, you know. And he wants us to, to live to the fullness. Not to, to live our last days because we contracted some, some disease and, and, and were crippled and, and, you know, die in a bed, uh, bed by ourselves. Because we cheated life because of sexual immorality. Now, that's good preaching. You should say amen once in a while. Right. Amen. Okay. Um, so, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, looking at it a little bit of a different way. Who owns the world? That's the question. Now, I know you don't want to say the, the devil or God. Who owns the world? The devil is the God of this world. Just put the TV on. The devil is the... Right. He owns. And when you stepped in sexual immorality, doing something God doesn't approve, okay? You're stepping into a territory... That's not really God's territory. It's, it's, in, it's another territory. You don't know. No, I know when there was a war in Vietnam and America sent men there. And you know what? The Vietnamese people, they live in the jungle. And they ate bugs. They drank dirty water. But when the American came in, they couldn't drink the dirty water. They couldn't eat the bugs. They're not used to that. They were stepping into a territory that's not theirs, first of all. You know, to the American, they were the enemy. To them, they were the American were the enemy. And you know what? They stepped into a ground. I mean, they would make holes in the ground, put stick on it, put a couple of snakes in there, and people would know and just step in a hole and die, a soldier bitten by a snake, or that kind of stuff. It was a different territory different way that they fought. Americans didn't know, and a lot of brave people died because they stepped into a ground that wasn't there. They didn't know. If they would have fought in in the States someplace, they would have been way better. And, And, you know, so the devil owns this world, and he wants you, because he knows God lives in you, to step into over the rail and go see what's happening over there. Sure, it's tempting. We just moved to Coburg. Uh, I'll be a month now. And our cat never went outside. Our cat is fuego. It means fire. I think you baptized him, fuego. You did. You came uh, one time and you, he was a little baby. He said, fuego! Okay, so we call him fuego. I mean, the cat, now he's six years old. He loves to play and curl up and uh, he never went outside. You try to you open the door, and so, so finally we said, "Hey, if he's gonna live, he's gonna live. If he's gonna die, he's gonna die." Open the door, and opening the door is like stepping to sexual immorality because now that's a territory that he doesn't know, and he did good for a week, a week. and he went around, a couple of hours came back. But then me and, Sh- and Sharon, we were sitting on the, on the couch, and <clears throat> we just put, she just put him out. And she heard that noise sound like there was a war underneath the veranda. And there was war underneath the veranda. This cat, 
a matu. You know what that is? He had his territory. That's my territory. He's the god of this territory, and no other cat will come here and swing his paw. All right? So I go down, I, I look underneath, and I see this thing. I mean, he was all puffed up. He was gold and uh, full of scar and scratch and big and ugly. And, and I go get the light, and I chase him away. And our cat is just terrified. We took him in the house, sat him in the, on the floor. He fell away on the side. We look, and he took a big chunk of his neck. Uh, just the hair, not the skin, because he had a collar. So he grabbed his collar, and he just shook the cat. I mean, poor cat. He didn't have a... Uh, it's like getting in a ring with this big giant, right? Anyway, yesterday, that was a week ago, you opened the door, you ran away. From the door. In the house. I mean, this is fresh memory. Open the door. I don't go outside. This is not my territory. So you have to understand that. Right? So last night, I opened the door. Somebody opened the door. He ran out. And he went back outside. And uh, I had my grandson jump over the fence and get him. But I'm saying that to you because when... You're going to experience, you know, um, uh, this type of sin, sexual sin. Is it? And then, you know what, after a week or two, well, it wasn't too bad. You know, you, you don't want to, uh, don't want to. But after a while, somebody else called you. Somebody called your name. You're so pretty, you're so good. You're good licking, and then, yeah, you know, some woman, uh, you say a nice word, and they just kind of melt down like chocolate. <laughs> well, I got one person that's uh, interested here. Great. <laughs> and, you know, and people forget, and they go back into it, because it's not the, it's the territory of Satan, and he wants to kill you. He wants to steal everything you got, and he wants to condemn you. And you know what? There's no way out except you put some guardrail That's right. and say, "No, I've done that before. I'm not going to do it." You know. And you know, like you have to. How does a young girl set guardrail? Well, this young guy comes. He doesn't have a job, right? He smokes pot, but he likes her, right? And, you know, uh, he, he plays a video game all day. Well, he likes her. And she feels loved by someone. Ooh, he loves me. She, she doesn't see all that stuff behind that's going to mess up her life. So what? Well, I'm, uh, the clock has stopped. <laughs> I got to show you the clock, see? There you go. See? We've got more time. No, I gotta cut it out. Anyway, what 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 she has to do? Is say, okay, you like me, I like you too. I'll give you three months. Get a job, quit the pot, and come back after three months, and I'll give you the next step. She come back after three months because you know he really just want to get her into his bed. He wants to. Uh, you know, for a season, and then go to somebody else because he lives in the kingdom of darkness, and this is what you do. And basically, a nice Christian girl get caught up in this thing, and it's not true love. Basically, there's no guardrail, and people's life get messed up. Right. And if daddy or mommy says something about it, well, they're too old. They don't understand. Isn't that true? You never went through it. All right. All right. So, just to finish, you can either flirt or flee. And that's a decision you've got to make today in your own life. I know my boundary. I know my weakness. And I know if I don't do anything, I'll be caught up in, a, in some kind of things that 
God doesn't approve of. And you know, that's what it comes down to. You set your guardrail. You set it in your life so that basically, you know, this is what you're going to do. I'm going to stick to my gun. If it kills me, I'm going to do it. You know? And you know, with people, sometimes you might mess up, but you come back to the cross and eventually you will beat it. How many wants to beat it? Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand up. You know, our God is good. He's so awesome. He's so awesome. You know, all the great men of God messed up. All of them. They all messed up one at a time. And God had mercy. They repented. And they went ahead. And you know what? That's all God is asking us to do today. Repent from the stuff that's still traveling, and maybe you got writing, maybe you got a letter from the past, maybe you got picture, maybe you got uh, whatever. Get rid of it. Say, God, I want to clean my house. I want to put guardrail around my house. I want to build my house on the rock. And what I know when I build my house on the rock, when people come to me and they need prayer, there's not going to be any condemnation when I pray for them because the devil will condemn you as soon as you want to pray for somebody. You did that. No, you didn't do it. You held on to his word. And you were strong. And people are going to recognize you and see you and say, this is a man, this is a woman of God. They're not perfect, but they're trying. And they're training their children. And they're training the, the people that they see to live that way. Now this is good. I want to live that way even more. I want to kill everything that want to destroy my mind. I want to kill everything that want to destroy my life. Because we have the power. He's our God. So put your hands up. Put your bold hands up. Right. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus. I don't want to be a Christian. I am a Christian. Lord Jesus, I make decision to build my house upon a rock. Just like Peter failed and Jesus called him a rock. I have failed, but today you call me a rock. Because I see you as my rock. I thank you, Lord, for leading my life, guiding my step, and I promise to keep your rules, your book, in my heart, that I may not sin against you. So I will flee sexual immorality in any way they come. I will work hard, Lord, to be holy and pure unto you. Lord, that's my commitment. I mean it from my heart. You're my God. You heard me. Amen. Amen.